Celebrity Cruises Exposed and Explained. I'll go through each class of ship and also give you 12 insider tips right after this. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Celebrity Cruise Lines. If you are planning your first or next cruise on Celebrity, there are going to be many things that you're going to want to hear today. We are going to talk about all the different types of ships and I'm going to give you some of my insider tips since we've cruised on Celebrity many times and it's probably our most favorite cruise line to date. Hi, I'm Doug and this is Seymour Seas, a cruise tips and planning channel where I hope to help you and your family pick, plan, and enjoy your next cruise vacation. If you find this video helpful in any way, please do give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's free to you but means the world to me. Thanks so much and let's get started. Many of you might know that Celebrity actually started in 1989 as a Greek-based large cruise operator. In 1997, Royal Caribbean purchased this Greek cruise line to make it Celebrity Cruises as we know it today. There are three different classes of ships in the Celebrity fleet. It's the Millennium class, the Solstice class, and the Edge class. Now there is a fourth type of ship in the Celebrity fleet that services the Galapagos Islands. We're going to cover that in a separate video. So the Millennium class ships are the oldest ships that started being built in early 2000s. In 2000, the Millennium was built, then the Infinity, the Summit, and the Constellation. All four of these ships are over 20 years old. However, they have been updated and upgraded to match all of the features and venues that you're going to find on the Solstice class ships. However, the Solstice class is larger with around 2,900 passengers and it's got some really standout features that you won't find on the Millennium class. The first of the Solstice class was, of course, the Celebrity Solstice in 2008. That was followed by the Equinox in 2009, the Eclipse in 2010, the Silhouette in 2011, and the Reflection in 2012. One of the standout features of the Solstice class that sets this apart in the industry is that all five of these ships have a lawn club on the top deck. This is real grass, and it's an outstanding, really cool feature. The first three ships had a glass blowing venue that provides demonstrations and classes on blowing glass. On the final two Solstice class ships, the glass blowing venue was replaced by the Lawn Club Grill. So both the Solstice class and the Millennium class are very similar in that they have very sophisticated decor. It has a very luxurious vibe and the service and friendliness of the staff is evident as soon as you walk on the ship. For the main dining room, you're going to have a multi-level main dining room with a big, huge glass wine tower and it's going to feel very, very upscale and the food is absolutely fantastic on both the Millennium class and the Solstice class in the main dining room. On both classes of ship, you're going to have the Ocean View Cafe. This is the buffet that is set up in a station format, which really reduces the likelihood of you standing in line or waiting a long time for a particular item. Very soon after the Celebrity Reflection was released in 2012, the Millennium class began getting solstitized, meaning a lot of the very popular solstice class features were then installed and retrofitted on the Millennium class. So as I stated, you're gonna have very similar experiences in a dining perspective on both classes of ships. 
for a specialty dining experience, you're gonna find similarities on both the Millennium class and the Solstice class. So you will find Tuscan Grill, which is the Italian specialty restaurant steakhouse. You'll also find Blue for the Aqua class guests. You will find La Petite Chef, which is the animated cartoon characters that are projected down onto your plate and the little characters create each course for you in an animated format and then once that course has been created on the animation the servers will actually serve you that particular course it's a really unique and fantastic experience you've got to try it some of the differences from the millennium class to the salsas class is that you will not find murano on the Millennium class ships. This is the very highest level specialty restaurant on the Solstice class. It's very fancy, phenomenal service, and much of the dining is actually made table side, and it's really a cool experience. We've done it several times. You'll find Cafe El Baccio on all of the ships, both Millennium class and Solstice class. This is a specialty coffee restaurant that most of the coffees are gonna be included in your drink packages. But one thing to note is that all of the pastries, little sandwiches and cookies are complimentary. So go back often. Let's move on now to staterooms. You're gonna find lots of similarities between the Millennium and Solstice class as well. You're going to have your standard inside stateroom, your ocean view stateroom, and then you are going to have balcony or what they call veranda staterooms. You're going to have then two other classes of veranda staterooms, which will be the concierge class, which comes with a little bit of upgraded amenities such as priority, uh, embarkation and debarkation, as well as a welcome lunch. And then the aqua class is going to be, again, exactly the same stateroom. However, it will have upgraded features like a pillow menu. It will come with access to the spa, various specials for the spa. And most importantly, it will have unlimited access to the Persian garden and a dedicated dining room in blue which is the healthier, cleaner dining room specifically dedicated to Aqua class guests. So Celebrity has done a great deal with the suite experience on their ships. They have in their suite area, it's called the retreat. You do have a dedicated butler, which they call the retreat host, and you have a number of different sizes of suites, starting with the Sky Suite and then moving into the Royal Suites the celebrity suites, the signature suites, and above. So this is an area where celebrity does a great job. You have access to your private dining room, Lumine, and you also have some really amazing service and a dedicated lounge in Michael's Club on both Millennium Class and Solstice Class, as well as on some ships, you do have a dedicated retreat sun deck as well. So let's talk about activities on both the Millennium Class and the Solstice Class. You're going to have very, very similar activities on both. You're gonna have the adults only solarium, which is 18 and above. It's an inside pool area. There's a spa cafe within the solarium because it's right next to the spa and the fitness center. On both ships, you're gonna have amazing large theater shows. They do have guest vocalists, comedians. You're going to have lots of live music in small ensemble style around the ship. You're also gonna have in the casinos, Celebrity is a non-smoking casino. So if you are a smoker, there are dedicated spots on board outside, but in the main casinos, which is a very open environment, it is a non-smoking venue. That sounds like a very adult experience and very low key, and it can be if you wanna make it that way. However, there's a lot of fun to be had as well on Solstice Glass and Millennium. There are a lot of bars and a lot of venues to have a great time. Couple of the, the more standout areas on both ships is the Sunset Bar and the Martini Bar. The Sunset Bar is at the very top of the ship aft, and it's a wonderful place to view sailaways as well as 
the sunset as you're going away from a tropical island. And then there's the martini bar. The martini bar is something that was rolled out on the solstice class and turned out to be one of the most popular uh, venues on board. There are several other bars on board, such as the Passport Bar and the World Class Bar. Passport is down by Guest Relations, and then the World Class Bar makes some very, very unique drinks, and it's a really cool area to uh, try something new. Another one of my favorite places on board is Cellar Masters. Cellar Masters is a wine-inspired venue with lots of dark wood and leather furniture and dark tables. It's really an amazing and beautiful place. Now, on some of the newer revitalized ships, that venue has been replaced with Craft Social, which is no longer a wine venue, but it is kind of like a sports bar with specialty beers on tap and a much more popular place. Okay, so let's move up to 2018 with the launch of the Celebrity Edge. This was a brand new style of ship for Celebrity and absolutely caught the industry by storm. It's got two sister ships that are sailing the Apex and the Beyond with the Ascent coming next year. You'll recognize the Edge class based on the fact that it's got this huge orange platform hanging off of the ship called the Magic Carpet. This is a platform that moves from floor or deck two to five to 14 and then 16. So on deck two, it is a destination gateway where you will walk down the ship and that is how you get either to your tender or you exit the ship while you're in port. It's an absolutely brilliant design. It's probably one of the most gorgeous and well thought out and designed areas to exit the ship when you're in port. When it goes up to deck five, it's an extension of raw on five, and you can dine al fresco outside, weather permitting. It is also a bar when it's on the retreat deck, which is the pool deck, and you can go out there and have drinks. It's an absolutely amazing venue. And then when it's on deck 16, it is a dining venue for dining on the edge. The martini bar is now the center of the middle of the ship, which is the piazza. And then above it, this amazing glass chandelier that provides a spectacular light show uh, throughout the afternoon and the evenings. There's also an area there for uh, live music to be played and then tons of seating around it on two different levels. The Lawn Club has been replaced with the rooftop garden. Now this is an area that is very organic. It's got lots of live trees and plants around and it is a venue meant for live music. The staterooms on the Edge class have also changed. You still have your interior and ocean view staterooms, but you now have a few different veranda staterooms to choose from. There is a solo cabin, and then you have a different kind of veranda stateroom called the infinite veranda. Instead of having a sliding glass door to a standard balcony, you have an extension of your balcony stateroom that you have a window that comes down, as you see here, that allows you to extend your stateroom when the balcony is not in use and when the balcony is in use you can shut doors behind you lower the window and you have the balcony experience when we were on the edge we had a standard balcony with a sliding glass door going out to a traditional balcony i however think this looks pretty cool and i can't wait to try it the suite experience or the retreat on the edge class has been highly upgraded in this class of ship. There are so many different types of suites to choose from, and they come with a lot of amenities. The one is the Lumine. Lumine is a dedicated restaurant that is no longer attached to the main dining room, but on an upper deck. It's near a brand new retreat lounge, also on the upper deck, and then some of the other suites, the two level villa suites, actually exit out onto the retreat sun deck which has been completely redesigned and on the edge and the apex 
is a one-story retreat sun deck and on the beyond it goes beyond even that. The next area that's very very different on the edge class ships is at the aft of the ship and it's called Eden. Eden is an absolutely magical area that is so laced with plants growing out of the walls. It's got this really amazing bar with a lot of fresh ingredients growing out of the bar itself. It has a uh, cafe attached to it that is complimentary. It also has a specialty restaurant that has a lot of leading edge, very, very different uh, entrees and cuisine, very similar to what you'd find on Wonderland on rural Caribbean ships. But this is such an absolutely fantastic area, so relaxing. It has a wall of glass looking out the back of the ship over the aft, and I found it absolutely comforting and really, really amazing. Though this is a new class of ship for celebrity, it has all the standard celebrity favorites. It has the adults only solarium. It's got a much bigger sunset bar beautiful on the very, very back top level of the ship. The Edge class does have a different dining experience when you're talking about the main dining rooms. They have four distinct main dining rooms that serve exactly the same menu in all four restaurants each night. It changes each day, but it also has a few options based on the theme of that particular dining room. Let me give you some examples. So the Tuscan restaurant is Italian influenced based on the Tuscan grill on the Stalsis class. The Cyprus is Greek influenced. So though it has all of the standard offerings that all the, uh, the rest of the restaurants have that night, it has some Greek influenced meals. Normandy based on Murano from the Solstice class, which has specific French options in addition to all of the other standard offerings that you're going to get from each of the other restaurants. And of course, it still has Lumine for the sweet guests and Blue for the Aqua class guests. Specialty dining on the Edge class is also going to be a little bit new. You're going to have the Fine Cut Steakhouse, which is the upgraded specialty steakhouse on board. You're going to have La Grande Bistro, which is going to be a lunch venue serving paninis and French baguette type sandwiches, as well as that is where La Petite Chef is going to be provided. Raw on Five is going to be the new sushi, sashimi, and seafood restaurant for lunch. We had this amazing seafood tower there when we were on the edge. We wanted to try the rooftop garden grill, which we feel is going to be very, very similar to the lawn club grill on the solstice class, but the evening we wanted to try it, there was some bad weather, so we were not able to. Eden was a little bit over the top for us, so not really our style, but something if you would like to do Wonderland or have done Wonderland on rural Caribbean, I think this is something you'd really love. So those are the three classes of ships that you will find when you're planning your next cruise vacation. If you find a celebrity ship for the itinerary that you're looking for, whether it be Millennium, Solstice, or Edge Class, you now know exactly what to expect on each of those different classes of ships. Now is the time that I give you my insider tips for being an experienced celebrity cruiser. First, make sure that once you book, you go on the celebrity cruise site and go to Cruise Planner. If you've chosen My Time Dining, I do highly recommend that you go on to the Cruise Planner and choose that particular day and grab a reservation for the time that you feel is going to be most appropriate for your dining time. If you are choosing specialty dining, make sure that you book that very, very early and that you pay for it right away because it is going to be much cheaper than waiting on board. It is also going to allow you to choose the day and time that you actually want. Another tip I have for celebrity is that when you book, it's going to say that it's an all included fare. This includes your basic Wi Fi, your classic drink package, 
and gratuities. One of the things to note is that you can book a cruise only fare if you do not want the Wi-Fi or the drink package and you can then just go ahead and prepay your gratuities on board. Something to note with the basic Wi-Fi is that each individual can upgrade that surfing package to a streaming package. Both individuals in the stateroom don't need it. So if you're just doing Wi-Fi and social media, the surfing package is going to be fine. But if you're going to be streaming videos and YouTubes and other things, you'll want to upgrade to the streaming package, which again can be done individually. In suites, the streaming, Wi-Fi, and the premium drink package come standard. Cafe El Baccio is a specialty coffee restaurant that I had mentioned that all of the snacks there are free and the specialty coffees do come complimentary with the classic or premium drink package. In the buffet, if it gets a little crowded in the buffet, our favorite spot is to go outside at the rear of the buffet and there's plenty of outside seating and it's much more pleasant and much quieter out there and we always enjoy that. That's our first spot for the buffet seating. I also recommend that you try the main dining room for breakfast, especially on sea days. It's a great experience, the food is fantastic, and you're not fighting any of the space in the buffet. A few on deck tips that I'll give you is that if the pool is crowded, try the solarium. It's much more quiet. It is adults only and there's normally space available in the solarium and they do have two hot tubs on each side of the ship. If you're doing the jogging track, one of the things that we do is it goes three quarters around the ship, but once you get to the end of the pool, there are two stairs that go up to the lawn club. What we like to do is do a lap on the jogging track, go up the stairs around the lawn club, play some bocce as we make our lap, do a round of that, go down the stairs and finish that lap on the jogging track and then just repeat that several times. It's a lot of fun and it makes it more enjoyable when you're doing the jogging track. Another tip that I'll give you is that the ships that have not been revolutionized with the edge features and the private retreat sun deck is that the solstice deck on the solstice class ships is the very top deck and it's extremely quiet, extremely private, and you're not going to have a bunch of people running around. You can read a book up there. There's shaded areas with loungers and it's a really, really nice leisurely experience. Because Celebrity is regarded as a premium cruise line, many people think it's very formal and stuffy. It's absolutely not at all. Their formal night is called Evening Chic. And if you don't want to have the long evening gown and the tuxedo, you absolutely do not have to do that. We used to wear suits. We no longer take suits on a Celebrity Cruise. For Evening Chic, khakis and a nice polo are more than sufficient. It's much more comfortable. However, if you do want to dress to the nines, you will be in good company because people still do that and do enjoy it. The last tip I'll give you is getting off the ship on your last day for debarkation. One of the things that we do on almost every cruise is we do the self-assist walk-off where we pull our luggage off with us and do not leave it uh, outside our stateroom door the night before. This normally starts at about 7 a.m. to 7.15 when the ship is cleared by the port officials. You want to be in line at about 6.30 so that you're not too far back in line. And one thing to note is that the line moves extremely quickly. Once the ship is cleared, you can have breakfast in the Ocean View Cafe beginning at 6 a.m. So just go have breakfast, go back to your stateroom, grab your luggage, get in line, and you'll have a very, very fast debarkation. So there you have it, a full description of Celebrity Cruises and what you can expect depending on which ship class that you choose. If you have additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to get to them. Also, let me know what your favorite Celebrity ship is or what one you're planning on cruising on next. 
When you are looking to plan a cruise on Celebrity Cruises, please consider using my travel agent, Deborah. She's a celebrity expert and will make sure that you get the best cruise possible. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do have additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Thanks so much and we'll see you again soon.